morning and welcome to Nairobi. I hope you can hear me well and um, I'm very, very happy to be here tonight. So I am wanting to share with you a few experiences that I've had over the past 20 years living as an expat abroad with my family. I'd like to start first with what it feels like when you first arrive in a new place and you want to find a quick and efficient way to settle down, but you're not quite sure how to go about it. I want to um, encourage you to just close your eyes for a moment and think what it feels like on the first day of school or first day in a new job, and then translate that into a first day in a new country, in a new place with a new experience of what it is to be you in a place where no one knows you necessarily from Adam. So I'm going to share with you a couple of tips today on how you can really make the most of this experience, though daunting at times can be very exhilarating and can free the way that you're thinking about yourself right now. When we moved for the first time to Sri Lanka, this is back in 2009, we had a young family at the time. Our daughter was 10 and we just had twin boys who were nine months old. When we arrived in Colombo, Patrick was at work and Maisie was at school. And once the boys were settled in the morning, I wanted to do something that got me out of the house and just had a breath of fresh air. I found Colombo quite hard to begin with when I first arrived because it was very different from the previous posting um, where we had just been in Thailand. And I felt Thai, funnily enough, even though I'm not Thai. And so I didn't quite fit in um, to the Colombo scene. So I went down to the British Council and I asked there if there was anywhere nearby where I could sit and read my book and magazine while I was waiting before going home. And they indicated there was a cafe not too far away. So off I went to this cafe and I sat down and a, and a waiter came over and said, Madame, may I help you? And I said, I'd like a coffee, please. And he looked at me as if I'd asked for something totally bizarre. And I looked at him again and said, well, how hard can it be? And I pointed at the coffee machine and I said, I just, I just want a coffee. So he went away and he bought me a coffee. Now this routine went on for the following six weeks. Every day after I dropped Maisie at school, I go down to the British Council, pick up a few new books, go and sit in this cafe, ask for a coffee, and was there from about half eight to half 10 every morning. Now, six weeks into the posting, I started to make friends um, down at the gym and at the school at the picket fence to pick up the kids. And one of my new friends said, I want to take you to this amazing place. You're going to really love it. We hopped into her car and as we drove close, I began to recognize the streets. And as we pulled in, I realized it was my cafe that we were walking into. But when we arrived, it was a completely different place. The baristas were running around crazily. The managers were all ablaze with uh, running from one side to the other and it was not the place that I knew at all. And as I was looking from face to face and people were nodding as me, at me as I was going through and my friend looked at me and said, how come people know you here? And I had to confess that I knew not only all the staff but I knew about their families and their friends because I'd become very close to them. As I sat down, I started to shrink in my seat because I realized there was something a bit odd. The fact that now at 11 a.m. it was absolutely packed with people. And then it dawned on me, the penny dropped, that for the last six weeks I had been sitting there as an expat in distress when the cafe wasn't even open yet. I had actually gone in from 8.30 to 10.30 when they were cleaning the floors, they were dusting down the cabinets, they were even hoovering under my feet and it never struck me, it never crossed my mind that it wouldn't be open. And I then realized how kind they had all been. Because in those six weeks that I didn't really know anyone, and I was an expat in distress, this was my place, my haven outside of home where I could just sit quietly, literally on my own, and collect my thoughts and recharge my batteries. So if you've ever been in the situation before where you've had to move to a new place, have you found that haven outside of your home? Is there a place in your heart that you're still thinking of, about now that you're so grateful for. And if you've just moved to a new country, I highly encourage you to take action today. Go and look on TripAdvisor, on Lonely Planet, uh, go and look in Internations or other online resources to see if you can find a place that looks like you might want to sit there for an hour or two on your own. Get out of the house, 
go and try and sit somewhere, maybe in nature, or maybe somewhere which connects to something you really love. I highly recommend this. And my next story that I'd like to share with you, so after you've arrived and you've found your haven, a place that you can feel really at home, I'd like you to think a little bit about how you want to survive in the new city or new place that you've moved to. Because after all, not every place is going to be as familiar as, as home, but also the rules about where you walk at night, who you engage with, how you present yourself on the streets is going to be different depending on where you're living. So I'd like to share with you a story about Vanuatu. Vanuatu is a beautiful island nation in the South Pacific. It has 200,000 inhabitants and it is literally in the middle of the ocean. When we first arrived there, we hadn't realized how hard it would be the transition from Mozambique. We were used to seeing the ocean every day from our flat, but we weren't used to seeing ocean on all sides. We were literally surrounded by sea. And one of the strange things about living in the Pacific is that you're on the ring of fire, which means that this country is subject to tsunamis, to earthquakes, to lava, to volcanic eruptions, you name it, if there's a natural disaster, a typhoon even, will hit the Pacific Islands. And so very early on we were learning how to look after ourselves, how to have a bag by the front door called a grab bag, in which we were asked to put uh, chocolate, uh, favorite toys, a little book for our daughter to read and our passports because um, at any moment a disaster might strike like an earthquake and you'd have to run and grab your bag and run out the door. And sure enough, after a few weeks of being in Vanuatu, we were hit by several earthquakes. And I remember very clearly running, grabbing my daughter with one arm and grabbing the bag with the other and getting out into the garden as the whole house was shaking from side to side. Now, I'd like you to think about where you're living right now. Is there some survival tip that is different here than all the other places you've lived? Are you able to drive at night? Is it safe? Are there certain places that you should avoid? Just take a moment now to think of something that you should take action on that will really, perhaps even possibly, save your life. And if you are so inclined, do share with me some of your experiences of that haven away from home and also the experience of having a safe um, attitude to looking after yourself, a sort of survival um, mechanism. So, for example, here in Nairobi, uh, I was advised when we first moved here that if you're driving at night and you're stopped, even by a policeman, don't stop. Just keep driving. This is because there can be highway bandits disguised as policemen that are trying to take over your car. So depending on where you're living, knowing these tips can really mean a great difference. And my third story that I'd like to share with you this evening is how you present yourself when you first arrive in a new location. This might be the chance to reinvent yourself. This might be the chance to take on a new career or a new aspect of a part of your life that you want to develop. For many years, I would introduce myself as the wife of or the mother of. I would explain that I was here in the country because my husband worked or because my children were at a certain school. And this time when I moved to Kenya, I decided I was going to present myself as Jessica so that people would actually know my name rather than being someone's mum or someone's wife. And that business card, I decided to talk about my passion, the things that I really love. So I would say things like, I'm Jessica and I love movies, or I'm Jessica and one of the things that I love most in the world is dolphins and swimming with dolphins. And soon I became known as the dolphin girl or the movie girl or the book girl, rather than someone's wife or someone's mum. So I'd like you to think about something that you're passionate about, something that you'd love to share with people that it's um, a passion or a hobby of yours. And then just close your eyes or even practice in front of the mirror right now. My name is and I love dot dot dot. And one of the great things about moving to a new place is that if you tell people you like to eat organic vegetables or go for long walks or coffee is really important to you, suddenly people come back with all sorts of exciting information. Take just the other day, I was sitting down with two friends at Java Cafe, which is a well-known brand here in the city, and we were talking about the importance of slow drip coffee. You have to be a bit careful about having it um, boiled too long, it just goes horribly bitter. And I was able to share the most amazing um, company that delivers uh, coffee to your door. It's called Shakespeare's Coffee. And my 
my friends were amazed. One of them had lived here for 12 years and she'd never heard of this company. And I felt very excited to be able to share that there was an amazing place to have coffee. But straight away, she came back with a couple of places, hideaway, where the best coffee in town can be found. So do present yourself with a connection to something that you love, something that you're passionate about, something that you would love to find someone else to have a conversation about it. Because one of the most important things about moving and living to a new place is the human connection that we all need to really feel settled. It's all very well having WhatsApp and Facebook and access to our friends back home and family, but it's quite different to have someone sitting across from you as excited as you are about a good place to have coffee. It needn't be rocket science. It could be something as simple as where can we go for a walk or how could we book a holiday to swim with dolphins or something simpler like shall we go and have a coffee in a nice place. So if you are happy to comment below or let me know how you're experiencing a living in a new place or even better if you have tips on how I can reach out and help not only people who are newly arrived but people who might be asked to move very soon and are not quite sure how to transition 